try to talk about how we understand artificial intelligence, if we can control it, and, and if it's really intelligent. There is a brilliant mind, Stephen Hawking, who actually said that it could be the best or the worst thing that ever happened in our civilization. It could be also both. Harari believes that we can still control it, and in the European Union, the European Parliament, we are listening and we are paying attention. So, what is artificial intelligence? Intelligence basically is the process of data and information and knowledge to be able to acquire it and actually act with it. It's, uh, it's applying knowledge. Artificial intelligence is basically data, which is information, in an equation, an algorithm that can help you take autonomous decisions, act in an autonomous manner. It could make predictions or help you optimize your solutions. This is actually the engine of the future, and it runs on data, and it, it does not run on oil. And since data are being constantly generated and it can reach all the sectors, we believe that the value by 2030 could reach 15 trillion and it could actually grow bigger very, very fast. So, where is AI? Is it in the near future? Some members of the parliament, some colleagues of mine would tell me like, well, we see autonomous vehicles in like 30, 40 years, it's science fiction yet. Actually, no, it's here, it's now, it's everywhere and it's in your hands. You even trust it already more than you think, and it could even know you better than you know yourself. You have a Google Maps on your phone, I guess, or another application for traffic. It uses AI to tell you the route that could be faster at this point, as it has collective intelligence and data that you don't have. So even if you think you know the best route, even if you went the same route for like years, you really trust your maps. So this is how AI acts. And when we say you, it knows you better than you know yourself, it, it can gather your likes, and it can understand and personalize your feed. It can even tell you who you like, who you should be friends with, understand your, your comments. And you can also have vehicles without wheels, and without, without uh, the will, without being able to act, the vehicle, you trust it and it keeps you safe. Artificial intelligence is promising to us that it can optimize energy grids, energy use. It helps us with maintenance, predictive even. So you, you, you can avoid an accident if you act fast. Personalized medicine, it can revolutionize fintech, even the fashion industry and it can allow to have like more jobs, jobs of the future for your metaverse identity, your online identity. For example, you could have like a stylist that designs clothes only for your digital self and that you would never wear them really. So basically, it, it can achieve remarkable things. It can uh, help you have compose art, compose music, compose trailers that they can draw your attention to, to a movie, and also life-saving discoveries. For example, it was the, the um, uh, life-saving uh, medicine, tailor-made, everybody was waiting to overcome the pandemic, but with the use of AI to develop a vaccine. And yes, it's so amazing that you can even have a synthetic Obama, a video that you cannot tell the difference, if it's the real one or not. And deep fakes can also manipulate your perception, and this could even lead to be a threat to our democracies if you see a weird video just before elections. We saw um, a case with the Cambridge Analytica, we saw what this could mean to our democracies. It could basically change your understanding about something and then maybe you decide something that you shouldn't have. Um, this happens also constantly through targeted advertisement. You talk about Mexico and you receive an advertisement for Mexico and you say, ah, it was meant to be, I have to go there. So it could pose a threat of our democracy if we don't act. And so what is the problem? How we can act? Is, is technology, I mean, is artificial intelligence good or bad? So it depends how you use it. 
we have several cases where actually it's not that intelligent. We have seen it in the Dutch government, we've seen it in the UK, we've seen the grading system. So basically, we had um, an algorithmic failure when they decided an algorithm would grade students, and actually it favored the, the ones coming from private schools against the disadvantaged ones, and this increased the inequalities in the grading system and reduced the options of the disadvantaged ones. There were a lot of protests, and the prime minister blamed the algorithm because there was no human oversight. And this is what UK decided, but this is not what Europe has decided. We want to have human oversight. We want to have a risk-based approach and per sector, which means we want to ban social scoring, we want to ban biometric surveillance. Uh, we believe that this is something that we need to achieve in our democracies. It already is happening in China. There is social scoring that can exclude you from your insurance system. It could decide if you can take transportation, public transportation or not. So this is something that actually we don't want to have. So it depends how we use it to say if it's good or bad. And what do we do about it? So we try to develop an ethical framework for AI so that we're going to have human-centric artificial intelligence that we can trust. We're going to have human oversight, social metrics for each decision that's going to be taken. Uh, when I was chairing the Science and Technology Committee, we visited the United States, a lot of universities and scientists telling us that really raising awareness about weaponized AI, autonomous weapons, and they said, we are not going to do something about it anytime soon. So if Europe doesn't, like GDPR, then no one will. And we listened. And in 2016, we set up the high-level expert group with the Commission to uh, decide an ethical framework for artificial intelligence. And this means we want to have accountability. We cannot blame the algorithm. We want to have fair AI that we can trust. And we want to test it. We want to make sure that it's going to protect our um, fundamental rights to have the right of privacy, but also to be safe. We need to make sure that it will uh, respect our freedom of thinking, our freedom of, of choice, our uh, right to a second chance, our right to fail and to try again. And it will not repeat or amplify existing biases that our system already has. So basically, we want to have options and we want to have choices for citizens, and we still can. Um, we will try to achieve an international law on artificial intelligence because this is a technology that goes across the globe. It's not just in Europe. We try to set global standards and to avoid dilemmas like, should I be safe or should I have my privacy? During COVID, if you would ask someone that has this application on their phone that can trace them down, you say, you prefer to be safe or private, usually they say, I need to be safe. But we don't believe that you need to choose. You can have both. And this is what we're trying to do. It's been several years that we're working on it. Um, now the Artificial Intelligence Act, our ambition is at the European Parliament. Um, I've set up the Center for Artificial Intelligence. We try to see all the transformation in each sector of our lives. And it is, it's, it is time to act. So you have basically all the technology of the Black Mirror. I don't know how many of you have you seen Black Mirror on Netflix. This is not an advertisement, just a question. Okay, some. All the technologies in each episode that, that we saw and were quite scary. We have them. We, we have this robot that can follow you around. We have lenses that they can record and they can tell you if you have a disease or predict something. We have social ranking. We have ranking that can decide if the bank should give you a loan or not. So everything is there. We have to decide what kind of life we want. If we want Europe to be a heaven of quality and trust and protection of our fundamental rights will be ensured with safeguards that we will have on all the sectors that are changing, and especially where AI can be harmful. You know that um, AI could even 
already suggest who you should be friends with, even who should your boyfriend or girlfriend be. And some people are worried that, I mean, at some point, we might not even realize that. We might be manipulated to choose. And this actually is what life is about. Life is about um, trying to have unexpected events, not to have predictions about everything, to make the wrong choices, but to learn from them, to have the experience that you made that mistake and you learn from it to overcome the obstacles, and not to repeat the biases, but to be allowed to have a second chance. So to, let's say, change the predictions and the negative predictions about you. So having the right of a second chance is uh, still our decision. We are actually acting. We are trying to influence even the rest of the world, where AI is being misused and is misleading citizens. We want to have artificial intelligence for good. We really try to have AI that can complement us and AI that will not replace us. And this is like an ongoing discussion. The definition that we have on our table is one that will allow to follow the technology and we ensure that we will have all the harmful AI banned from Europe and we will make sure that we will use it just to benefit citizens, to achieve its promise, and to have like a place that everybody wants to live in. So thank you so much for having me.